Chef Mark with Escoffier Online International Culinary Academy. Today's session, we'll be discovering wines and expanding our knowledge about wines. One of the first wines I drank when I moved up from sweet wines, such as Chablis or Rhine wine or maybe Matus or some of those sweet wines, was a white Zinfandel, because it's fruitier. We're not talking about sweet wines now. Sweet wines are only used for dessert instead of dessert, or after dinner, a small glass of muscat, or an ice wine, or a late harvest Riesling, or late harvest Gewürztraminer. Those are dessert wines. So talking about table wines, they're never sweet. So sweet wines are only used for some religious purposes and for to be served after dinner, in lieu of or along with a dessert. So we're talking about dry wine. So all these wines are dry, but they have fruity notes because of the grape, how the grape is handled throughout the process. You have a white Zinfandel, which is actually a black grape, where they left the skin on a little bit to give it that, that rosy hue or blush. They're known as blush wines for that reason. Actually, white Zinfandel was a winemaker's error, and when they ran back to realize, they said, wait a second, don't pour it out. Someone had turned the vat and drained all the wine up before it became a regular Zinfandel, which is red. Said, wait. They bottled it and it's been a big hit ever since. So it's a very light, approachable wine. If you graduated from a Rhine wine or a light wine, uh, this is the wine, just a very fruity, nice fruit aroma, nice color to it as well. It's cork finished. Uh, some wines have a twist top, shouldn't affect anything. Twist top actually can keep the wine longer than a cork, as the cork can, of course, shrink through time and let air inside. But that's how wine ages through a cork. Wine won't age through a screw top. Fine wines use screw top and cork, so they're interchangeable. So you certainly a lot of the um, less expensive or, or the, the fruitier wines need to be served very cold. So they're, you know, that's in the 45 to 50 degree range. And so the white Zinfandel uh, is popular for that. So I removed the cap using the knife of knife that's on the waiter's corkscrew. Buy yourself this kind of corkscrew. It's a professional waiter's corkscrew. You actually get the cork out easier than that little contraption that bends up and down and you can't figure out how to get the cork out. So always buy a professional waiter's corkscrew. Liquor stores and liquor shops carry that. As a blade on one end, the Teflon coated auger and then this little device here. I'm not sure what that's for, but What I do first is, once you've chilled the wine, wipe it dry and then take the blade and just run underneath the lip. There's a lip here on the wine, right? So find that and just hold it and run it around it. And then use that part you lift off the cap. This is, uh, this is foil. This is, actually, this is actually plastic, which is better than foil because foil has lead. So a lot of progressive wineries have moved away from foil, which has led to plastic. And of course, what this does, there's always a hole in it to allow air to penetrate the cork. This is also cork finished, which allows the wine to be laid down. And these wines should be laid down because if you store wine standing up for a long period of time, eventually the cork shrinks and the wine gets bad. So people say, oh, I've had a white Zinfandel for 18 years. It always oh, that very nice that you had it for 18 years. I don't think you can drink it now. So in any event, keep your wine laying flat, keeps the cork moist, and thereby provides the cork, it swells and prevents the air from getting in too quickly. So once you remove that um, a foil or plastic cap, you want to wipe off sometimes there's dirt inside there. So we'll do that to all our three wines, White Zinfandel, Fumé Blanc, and Pinot Noir. Popped right off. How do you like that? So the next thing to do is you get the, the, the dreaded opening up the cork of the wine, right? The dreaded opening up the bottle of the cork. Sometimes the poor serve, they're so nervous, they don't know what to do. And I just don't look at them that way. They, they don't have to worry about it. They do it the wrong way. So when we get the cork out, I'm happy. 
But if you're going to use the, the corkscrew, just tilt the bottle a little bit. Now you want to put a little off center. So the point of the auger, just a little off center, and get it in there. See, just twist it in there. So see, a little off center. And then see, press it down as far as you dare. And then, oh, that's what this is for, right? This part fits on the rim of the bottle. See that? Just like that. So you lift it up, lift it up. It's certainly okay to, you know, halfway to grab it. If it's really tight, or well, the wine's been stored standing up and the weight is struggling, it's, it's not stuck on this because wine Zinfandel, you don't age it. You drink it as fresh as you get. So this comes out very easy. But sometimes it's also smaller on, on the white Zinfandel. Small car. So it says Beringer. They've been producing wine since 1875. It's a great tour of the Burrage Vineyards in, um, in uh, St. Helena, a beautiful old mansion from way back. So there's a small cork. It's actually made from cork from a tree. So that's a good indication that it's from that winery since the, the label also is on the cork. If you don't smell the cork, you'll, you'll, you'll just smell cork. You, you, you feel the cork to see if it's wet. They'll tell you if they store the wine properly. So that's where the waiter puts it in front of you to you go, hmm, it's kind of dry. So you're suspicious already, right? Then you want to wipe the inside in case there's any cork in there. Is there any, is no cork in there, that's the good thing. Just pour the wine. Just a little bit of a twist of the wrist, right? Always present the label to the guest so they can see it. Start this way and just naturally turn your wrist. It'll stop. Try not to pour too much on the table. Cloth. Do a little swirl. Nice fresh grape aroma. Very fruity. Very nice wine. Very light. White alcohol, 11% or less. It has a fruity texture, which is great. It doesn't have a, it isn't dry like a, a Cabernet, so it's very light. And it's a great wine to drink, like I said, if you're graduating, moving up from a, a white wine, a Rhine wine. A nice way to have a fruity wine. Great with put fruit, make a sangria with it, or drink it as it is. So that's very nice. The white Zinfandel. All right, now we're going to try Fumé Blanc. Fumé, the French word, means to smoke. Uh, the story goes that Robert Mondavi, who founded Mondavi Vineyards in 1966 in, in St. Helena, saw the morning mist come in and Fumé smoke, and he said, oh, it would be great to call this great Fumé Blanc. And of course, it's been a big hit since 1966. One of my favorite wines is it's a Sauvignon Blanc, grown in the Napa Valley. It has like, you know, this peach and herbaceous flavor. It's really a wonderful wine. It's crisp. It's not as fruity as the white Zinfandel. It's dry, but it's fresh. It has lots of character. It's a white wine. The, the Sauvignon Blanc grape itself comes from Bordeaux, France. There in, in Bordeaux, France, it's used as a blending grape. In the U.S., we, we put the, the grape name on the bottle. In France, they put Chateau this or Chateau that. In the U.S., we actually can use up to 75% of that grape in the bottle. So if it says Fumé Blanc, up to 75% uh, must be uh, the Fumé Blanc grape. So much longer cork, you notice, than the white Zinfandel. Because you can age a Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, it's uh, just such a beautiful, some pineapple in the nose. And this has a great taste. And uh, again, the cork is wetter than the white Zinfandel was. So They've actually stored it properly, and that's important. Put that down. And then, uh, as you know, we wipe the inside and pour some. So Robert Madabi pioneered, probably pioneered wines, the modern era wines in the Napa Valley. From 1966 forward in the 70s and 80s became very popular. His son, Michael Mondavi, runs the winery now. They make some great, great wines. And we're able to uh, sell, uh, able to sell worldwide. So it has a nice herbaceous, like herby, uh, sweet grassy smell to it. The aroma, we call the aroma. And as it sits, it uh, gets even uh, more that the uh, fruit comes out.
nice wine. You want to judge the, the quality, the color of the wine, put against the white background. We'll tell you the color of the wine. If you drink a white wine that's really an amber brown, it's probably spoiled. It happens to Chardonnay sometimes. So you can see it's a very, very, very light straw color. There's a little pineapple in the nose, which is great. Great wine. It retails for about twenty dollars. Uh, the white Zinfandel retails for about uh, eight or nine dollars. So white. Um, so the Filet Blanc, great wine. It's dry, of course. These are all dry wines. Great with salmon. I've had this with pork chops. I've had this with, uh, with you know, with chicken. It's great with salad. It's a wine you love. Uh, Fondabi's Filet Blanc. Great, great uh, benchmark and the Sauvignon Blanc uh, world. Our next wine is a Pinot Noir. It's uh, classically in a burgundy shaped bottle, different than the uh, Bordeaux shaped bottle. So sloping shoulders denotes uh, a wine that is from Bourgogne, France, Burgundy. Uh, the Pinot Noir grape, black grape from that part of France, uh, actually now grown in Argentina, New Zealand, Australia, Chile, and of course, California. What's nice about Pinot Noir, it's a little softer than Cabernet Sauvignon, which is a little more tannic and harsher. Pinot Noirs are softer, and therefore people enjoy that when they make the break from a white wine. They say, well, I want to try a red wine. Try a Pinot Noir, since a Cabernet will really knock your socks off. Uh, the Pinot Noir will be a little softer, and it's mellower. This is um, La Crema. One of the best producers of Pinot. It's in Sonoma County, which is a little different than Napa Valley or Napa County. It's cooler up there in the Santa Rosa, Healdsburg, Russian River area. So since it's cooler, the Pinot Noir grapes like a little cooler weather. That evening fog that rolls in. So always grab the cork here in case you want, you want to snap it. And also a long cork, uh, cork finished. So that's actual cork from the tree. The, the cork from this bottle here is a composite product. So it saves cork trees. They only grow cork trees in Portugal, so it's a limited resource. So as you can see, it swells. That's a good sign it's been stored laying down. The, redder, the older the wine is, the more redder this gets. Pinot Noirs can store 50, 60, 70 years easy. So let's, um, under optimal conditions, 55 degrees, 70% humidity. So the Pinot usually has a berry, raspberry, what is it, whatever brambleberry is, but it's in the, a, a berry nose to it. It's a, a little lighter. Not as dark as a Cabernet, but still it's a garnet red, right? Beautiful color. When you first uh, open up the wine, it'll taste different an hour later. The reason why you taste wine in a restaurant is just to make sure it's not spoiled, so your nose is the best indication that it's not bad, it would smell bad. So it's a sound wine, it's not vinegar or a spoil, you'd know right away. So that's nice, it tastes like um, a raspberry. But it's dry again, it's a great wine. Pinot Noirs are very light. You don't wanna drink them too cold. Um, they're pleasant with pork chops uh, and you know a veal dish, they go great with that. It's lighter wine, some people like the Cabernet, the, the heavy hitting Cabernet. I like the Pinots because they're lighter, they're softer, not as tannic, uh, they're they're not as heavy as the Cabernets, but they have the lighter fruit in the berry area. Uh, I think you'll like it. Uh, I think you'll enjoy this wine. It's the La Crema Pinot Noir. Enjoy. Well, thank you for joining us today for our wine knowledge session. And we'd like you to subscribe for further videos and updates on this subject. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today.